Hello and welcome to the question and answer session of Colang. So in this video, we'll come across different questions and I'll also answer those questions that we usually find out in a Golang interview. Let's get started. The first question, what are the benefits of using Go compared to other languages? So the answer will be unlike other languages which started as academic experiment, Go code is programmatic design. Every feature and syntax decision is engineered to make life easier for the program. That means C and C++ were the languages which were earlier used or Java also we can say which were earlier used, but these were mostly used for academic purposes. But if I talk about some programmers, so programmers, they it is more user friendly for programmers when we use this Golang. Now Golang is optimized for concurrency and works well at scales. Golang is often considered more readable than other languages due to single standard code format. So here in Golang, we don't have multiple standard code, whereas it follows a single standard code, which has like similar codes. That is why we say it is more readable. Now we also can tell that automatic garbage collection is notable more efficiently than Java or Python because it executes concurrently alongside the program. Going on to the next question, what data types does Golang use? Answer would be Golang uses the following types. The first is method. Then we have methods like we have different methods. Then we have Boolean, which is true and false numeric, which will have numeric values. When I say integer float double, those are numeric data types. Then we have string, similar string like uh, name and all. Similarly, we have arrays. Uh, then we have slice, struct, pointers. Your function is also a data type, then interface, map, and channels. So these are the data types that Golang uses. Now, what form of type conversion that does Go support? Convert an integer to a float. So the answer to this will be Go supports explicit type conversion to satisfy its strict typing requirement. That means, for example, if I use something like a variable i is equal to 55. j is another variable where I use and I have 60.1 and I have another variable which is someone and I want to add i variable with j variable. But you can find out here that this i variable and j variable are different where i is an integer and j is a float. So what I can do is I can convert my i variable which is an integer type to float type and then I can add to this another uh, to this j variable which is again another of float type. So what I'll do to convert my integer to float what I can do I can convert my i variable to float type. So what I'll do so someone is equal to float of this is what explicit conversion is I'm explicitly converting this i variable to float now and then I'm adding with this j variable which is again a float type. Now let's move on to the next question. What is a go routine? How do you stop it? Now a go routine is a function or method that executes concurrently along any other go routine using a special go routine thread. Now go routine threads are more lightweight than, than standard threads with most Golang programs using thousands of go routine at once. To create a go routine, add the go keyword before the function declaration. You can stop a go routine by sending a signal channel. Go routine can only respond to signals if told to check. So you will need to include check in logical places such as at the top of your for loop. In simple language, if I say I can stop my go routine by using a for loop. Once my for loop has been satisfied, my go routine will stop. Now the main go routine also stops automatically when the program terminates. Okay, how go routine stops here. Now let us move on to the next question. How do you check a variable type at runtime? Now we have seen this. Now the type switch is the best way to check a variable's type at runtime. The type switch evaluates variable by type rather than value. Each switch contains at least one case which acts as a conditional statement and a default case which executes if none of the cases are true. Now the next question, 
how do you concatenate strings now the answer is the easiest way to concatenate string is to use the concatenation operator that is the plus sign which allows you to add string as you would numerical values now this plus operator not only adds to number concatenate that means join two strings we can tell that as concatenation or concat so we can concat two strings or more strings by using the help of this plus operator moving on to the next question explain go interface what are they and how do they work interfaces are a special type in go that defines a set of method signatures but they do not provide implementation values of interface type can hold any values that implement those methods now interface essentially acts as placeholders for methods that will have multiple implementation based on what object is using it now let us move on to the next question can you return multiple values from a function now, the answer to this is yes we can a go function can return multiple values but each separated by commas in the return statement now when i say each separated by uh, commas in the return statement that means in the parameter while declaring a function we also need to have multiple parameters and that multiple parameters has to have commas and accordingly to the parameters i can then return by using this commas here but let's move on to the next question format a string without printing it how can we format a string without printing it now when i say format a string without printing it you must have seen that while explaining i have used a lot of print functions there was print ln now there was print f now similarly we have something called as fmt dot print f now the easiest way to format without printing is to use the fmt dot s in capitals print f which returns a string without printing it now let's move on to the next question now this is one question which mostly interviewers they ask you and that is explain the difference between concurrent and parallelism in colang now the answer to this is concurrency is when your program can handle multiple tasks at once while parallelism is when your program can execute multiple tasks at once using multiple processor that means like earlier we used to have multiple cores in those multiple cores we used to pass two different cores there but here in concurrency we don't have to pass in two different cores in two different process that single in a single processor we can pass now multiple or multiple cores or multiple tasks we can pass it in a single processor also so that is what basically concurrency and parallelism is so we can also say in other words concurrency is is a property of a program that allows you to have multiple tasks in progress at the same time but not necessarily executing at the same time that means concurrency or it takes in multiple tasks that doesn't mean it processes this multiple tasks at the same time no but whereas parallelism is a runtime property where two or more tasks are executed at the same time now parallelism can therefore be a means to achieve the property of concurrency but it is just one of the many means available to you the key tool for concurrency in golang are coroutine and channels coroutines and concurrent lightweight threads while channels allows coroutine to communicate with each other during execution does go have exceptions now as i have said you it doesn't have any exception or it cannot catch and throw so the answer to this is no go takes a different approach for plain error handling goes multi value return makes it easy to report an error without overloading the return value the go code uses error values to indicate an abnormal state so you must have remembered i have said you this in program so i always use a if statement if error is not equal to nil that type i you uh, that is what how i can uh, handle my errors so in uh, golang we do not have catch and throw to handle our errors here now what is a pointer very simple answer a pointer variable can hold the address of a way what does that mean that means when we have x is equal to 5 that means that x variable is holding that data that is called 5 but if i have a pointer that pointer that means in that location where my variable is pointing towards there save that value that means if i have x pointer and i save 5 there 
So in that location, in that IP address or in that address, my five value will be stored. Or I don't have to initialize another variable, supposingly y, and I don't have to equate that with the variable x. What I can do, I can point it towards the pointer where that five is stored, and I will fetch or I will get that data too. So that is what a pointer is. Now, what are the differences between unbuffered and a buffered channel? For unbuffered channel, the sender will block the channel until the receiver receives the data from the channel, while the receiver will also block the channel until the sender sends the data into channel. Compared with unbuffered counterpart, the sender of buffered channel will block when there is no empty slot of the channel, while the receiver will block on the channel when it is empty. What is the default value of type boolean in Go programming? Now, the default type is always false, so false is the default type of boolean. What is type assertion in Go and how does it do? Now type assertion takes an interface value and retrieves from it a value of the specified explicit type. Type conversion is used to convert this similar type of types in Go. Now, in intervals, I can use different types and I'll do that using this type assertion. Now, let's move on to some multiple choice questions. Which of the following is a derived type in Go? The options are A, interface types, B, map types, C, channel types, or D, all of the above. So the answer to this will be D, all of the above. You know that we have interface type, we have map types, and we also have channel types in Golang. Now the next question, which of the following is true about for loop statement in Go? The first option is if condition is available, then for loop executes as long as the condition is true. Second option, if range is available, then for loop executes for each item in the range. C, both of the above. Now D, none of the above. The answer to this is C, both of the above. That means if the condition is available, then also for loop runs. If there is a range also available, then also the for loop runs. Now moving on to the next question. Do we have a while loop in Golang? But the answer to this is no. We don't have a while loop in Golang. With the for loop itself, we can iterate through a condition, which is actually applied to a for loop. So here in Golang, we do not have a while loop. Now the next question is, which of the following is a string in Golang? And the options are A, X, is equal to 10, B, X is equal to within quotes 10, C, none of the above, or D, all of the above. The answer to this will be B. Now you must be thinking that we have a 10 here. So how come this, it's an integer? 10 is an integer. So how come I'm saying this as a string? Just because I have it in two double quotes, that is why I say that here, the B option is actually correct for a string. Now the next question, which of the following function returns the capacity of slice as how many elements it can be accommodated? Option A, size method. Option B, len method. Option C, cap method. Or D, none of the above. Now the answer to this will be C, the cap method. With this method, CAP method, I can actually find out the capacity of a slice. Moving on to the next question, which of the following is correct about interface in Go? The first option will be, Go programming provides another data type called interface, which represents a set of method signature, or it is B, struct data type implements these interface to have method definition for the method signature of the interface. Or is it both of the above? or it is none of the above. Now the answer to this is C, both of the above. That means in an interface, the Go programming provides another data type called interface, which represents a set of method signatures. Also, 
struct data type implements these interface to have method definition for the method signature of the interfaces. Moving on to the next question, what is the zero value of interface? Options are A, zero, B, one, or is it C, nil, or is it D, none of the above? So the answer to this will be C. It will always be nil. Then zero value of interface is nil. Now the next question, which of the following is correct about structure in Go? When I say structure, that means structs. Option A, to access any member of structure, we use the member access operator, that is a dot, dot operator. Or it is B, you would use struct keyword to define variables of struct type. Or it is C, you can pass a structure as a function argument in very similar way as you pass any other variable or pointer. Or is it D, all of the above? The answer to this will be D, all of the above. All the points that I have here, A, B, C, are for structure or struct. Moving on to the next question, which data type allows to group or combine items of possibly different types in a single type? And the options are A, interface, B, channels, C, structure or struct, or D, none of the above. So the answer to this will be C, structure or struct. So the structure or struct actually allows you to group or combine different data types into a single type. And if I don't have a data type initialized or a value initialized, the by default value it will take is its corresponding default values. For example, if I take integer, then I take string. So for an integer, it will take by default value as zero. Moving on to the next question. All the GoRoutine terminates when the main function terminates in Golang. Is this true or false? So we have options A as true, B as false. The answer to this is yes, true. Now, whenever I have a GoRoutine, I have my own GoRoutine, as soon as the main function terminates, all the go routines present in that program will terminate. In fact, the main function is also called as the main go routine. Moving on to the next question. So how is an anonymous variable declared in Golang? And the options are A, at the rate, B, underscore, C, star, or D, hash. So the answer to this is B, underscore. So we know we can use an anonymous variable. So in Golang, Whenever I declare a variable, I need to use that variable. But if I want to declare a variable and I don't want to use that variable, anonymous variable comes very handy. I use anonymous variable and I can declare my variables, but I don't have to use them. What is the default value of error in Golang? Options are A, nil, B, zero, C, one, or it is D, error. So the answer to this is A, nil. So the default value of error will always be nil. That is why when we check an error, we always write down if ERR. So ERR is nothing but the keyword that all the Golang developers, they use widely it is used. So when I use if ERR is not equal to nil, that is how I check my error. Moving on to the next question, which of the following method is used to write data to file? First option is input reader dot read string open bracket within quotes backslash n close close quote and close bracket. Second option log dot fatal f option c buff io dot new reader os dot standard in or is it t i o u t i l dot write file. So the answer to this is d i o u t i l dot write file is the method where I can write my data to a file. Now for that, I need to also import my IOUTIL package and then I'll use my dot write file here. Moving on to the next question, which of the following method is used to create a file? And the first option is defer f dot close or is it d os dot create? Is it c os dot open file or is it d all of the above? 
the answer to this is b os dot create with os dot create i can actually create a file and i have to also import my os package where i can use this dot create method moving on to the next question which of the following is used to print and come to a new line option a fmt dot s print option b fmt dot print ln option c fmt dot print f or is it d none of the above the answer to this is option b fmt dot print ln so with the help of fmt dot print ln i can print my statement or i can print out anything and then i will come to a new line thanks for watching all of these training videos i hope these training videos will help you in the new near future and i wish you best of luck with golang thank you